1937 Massey Harris Challenger, uh, all original, hooked to a 1927 Massey Harris disc plow. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Tractor Man 44. Uh, you can tell by my backdrop that I'm over at my much older brother's house, uh, where we've got his 1937 Massey Harris Challenger uh, hooked up to our old uh, PE36 Massey Harris disc plow uh, that's been on the farm since 1927. That's getting pretty close to 100 years. Uh, now, this thing, I remember the last time it being used was in the very late 50s. I was nothing but a little bitty guy. Uh, he might have used it sometime later than that. Uh, he seemed to think that he had sometime in the early 60s, but definitely not since the early 60s. But I can verify the late 50s for sure. But at any rate, he's worked a considerable amount getting this thing to where it's all loosened up and ready to, to function. But we're still having some adjustment difficulties, and right now we've had to take the trip wheel off. He's down the shed right now, clean a little bit more stuff that we kind of missed on the inside of that uh, trip thing. Get it back up here. We're gonna put it on and see if we can go ahead and, and uh, get a little bit of a food plot turned up with this old disc plow. So hang in there for a little bit. Bear with us. It's a little bit of tweaking we got to go through, and hopefully we'll get it satisfactory. If not, at least we're gonna get to see the old tractor again. For those of you that might not be too familiar with the uh, with the tripping mechanism on these old plows. Uh, of course, we've got this disconnected right now so we can actually work on this. But whenever you pull the trip lever up here, this thing will fall backwards like this and drop it into the ground. You pull the lever again, and this ball right here, this roller right here, rolls around a set of matching indentions on the inside of the trip wheel that he's actually cleaning right now or buffing out right now and raise the plow up out of the ground. So one position drops it into the ground, the other position raises it up out of the ground. That works just exactly like this right here. And of course, when that happens, this bar moves, puts pressure on this, and the, allows the, the whole plow, the set of plow beams to come out of the ground. That's one position, and that's the other position. We're trying to iron that out right now as to why it doesn't want to go down, and when it does, it doesn't want to come up. If we're a little lucky, it's going to work a little better now. Well, obviously, this attempt didn't turn out nearly as good as what we uh, what we really wanted. So we're not going to continue the video simply because we just we don't know how to get this thing adjusted properly. Once we set back and put our thing caps on and think through everything, we'll probably come back and do a much more detailed and, and accurate video of it in operation. But uh, nobody wants to look goofy out there trying to do something they obviously don't know how to do 
and I have to admit to you that's what the case is right now. We can get the trip mechanism to work, but it doesn't work all the time, so it's not reliable. So unfortunately, I guess I have to uh, label this as a, a TrackMan 44 fail, but uh, it's back to the drawing board and we will get her, we will get her figured out and uh, we'll put up a real good video one of these days. We were over here trying to uh, make this Massey Harris plow go in the ground. We, we just didn't have too good luck. And we haven't been able to come up with the reason why yet. So we're going to farmerize it today. Uh, I stopped by to help the much older brother here. Um, and what we decided to do is give a little bit of aid to this tripping mechanism. To a little bit of aid to it going around the circle or, or making the half moon in order to make them drop and then also to raise them back up out of the ground. I could put them in the ground if I walked behind and hit it with my foot. I told him I was putting about 30 pounds, maybe 40 pounds of pressure with the toe of my foot in order to make it do what it did, but it is not right. And so we're just farmerizing it and making it where it can uh, do what we want it to do. So it is what it is. When we get done with this, we're going to go out and if it's not too muddy and see if this will work. Yeah, a couple of times I just had to grab my phone and, and make a quick video or part of the video and I forgot I held the phone in the wrong direction so I apologize for that. Yeah we decided to hook on to them plows with this uh, mid early 50s Massey Harris 44. Now what we're doing we're using that uh, 44 to see if our fiddling around uh, made them to where they work. Now, normally when you hook onto a set of plows and head across the field, nice, easy, soft cutting like this, you're gonna be in, the, in third gear, you know, wide open throttle. Right now, we're just testing, so he's just poking along in low gear. What we did, essentially, we put a little bit of an assistance on this leg. This is the wheel that actually trips and goes, makes the plow set down, but uh, we just couldn't get it to pull out of the ground. So what we did is we put this turnbuckle and we put this uh, garage door spring, we adjusted the length of it, and we added that to it so whenever we pull the trip, the trip mechanism back there on that wheel, it'll go ahead and uh, allow it to drop into the ground and then assist it in coming back out of the ground. Kind of a Rube Goldberg thing, you know, but it's a, a farmerized deal that actually worked this time. So, you know, it is what it is. And so this will cover 36 inches whenever you, uh, when you turn a set of furrows. And this, this is a disc plow. It's not a typical moldboard plow. You can see the the huge concave uh, discs that are on here and that's made specifically for turning under brush and uh, a lot of grass a lot of grasses because these discs as they're going around they're putting such a tremendous amount of pressure on the ground it cuts like the tree roots the small saplings and things like that and uproots it very very well once you would do that you would get a spring tooth harrow and you would drive around with the spring tooth harrow and pull all that debris and everything to the edge of your of your woods and, and of course uh, unload the spring tooth harrow but like I said, I've never, never been on a tractor pulling these. And it's been since the 60s, the early 60s at the very latest, since my brother has. So um, he and I worked on it and tried to get everything adjusted up to our satisfaction. Okay, now guys, this was an extremely difficult few seconds of video to get on camera. But I needed to tell you to stay tuned for the next video. It's going to be a whole lot better and won't be such a failure. That's about it. This TrackMan 44. And I'm out of here.